How are you, my friends? This video is presenting seven old exams questions related to trigonometric functions of angles in lecture 13. Question number one, we have the point minus square root of three minus two on the terminal side of angle B. Let's find uh, sine B times cosine B plus cotan B. Now, since X is negative, Y is negative, we know this angle is in quadrant three. So we can find r by using r square root of x squared plus y squared. Remember, you square all the number here, negative, negative. It will be square root of 7. This is r always positive. Now we go by the definition, sine of b, y over r. See the y here, minus 2 over square root of 7. Cosine of b, x over the r, also minus square root of 3 over square root of 7. And we need tan of b, y over x, which, which will be positive here, y over the x. I just put the numbers here. Sine of b, I put it there. Cosine of b, I put it there. Just multiply, you get here 7 down and 2 square root of 3. And here square root of 3 over 2. So that's a cotan. See, the cotan is the reciprocal of tan. So in the question, we need cotan of b there, see? So I find first tan of b, then cotan of b will be the reciprocal square root of 3 over 2. Find the LCD, the answer would be 11 square root of 3 over 14. Now, similar question here, but tan is given, tan theta, square root of 13 over 3, and cosecant of theta is negative. Let's find sine theta times tan theta plus cosine theta. If tan theta is given, then I break it down into x and y. So tan theta will be y over x. For sure, we have to find r. Now, cosecant theta is less than zero. That means also sine, which is the reciprocal, is negative. So theta lies in quadrant three. See the tan positive. This is in quadrant three or quadrant one, but we have cosecant of theta and negative, which means sine of theta negative, so theta in quadrant three. So let's find r. r squared will be x squared plus y squared. So r squared will be 16. r will be four positive. So sine theta will be y. See the y minus uh, this is the trick here, minus square root of 13 over 4, and the cosine x minus square root of 3 over 4. Remember, this is sine and this is cosine. Both are negative in quadrant 3. Now, uh, tan is there. See, square root of 13 over square root of 3, you can rationalize it. So it will be square root of 39 divided by 3. Now, let's find the value. Sine theta times tan theta. This is sine theta. This is tan theta plus cosine theta. See this one, I can break it down here, square root of 39, you see here, over three. So this is square root of 13 times square root of three over three. So now you have square root of 13 here, and here from the yellow, you have square root of 13, which is 13, there is a minus, and 12 there, three times four, and then square root of three. Minus, square root of three over four. Then find the LCD, multiply up and down in the second one by three. So the final answer minus four square root of three over three. Let's find the reference angle. We have seen in the lecture 13, some questions about the reference angle, minus 860 and eight radians, another angle. Let's see, minus 860, this is a negative angle. Usually when you have a negative angle or very large positive angle, you have to find coterminal. Coterminal, either you add or you subtract multiples of 360. So minus 860, I have to add three times 360, which is 1080. So that will be 220 now. 220, see when you draw 220 in standard position, this is in quadrant three. So also minus 860 lies in quadrant three, but it's in the negative three complete cycles in the negative, then it will stop in quadrant three. To find the reference in quadrant three, you take the angle itself minus 180. See the angle itself, the big angle here, the coterminal for sure, 
minus 180, which is 40 D reference. Now, this is, this is a nice diagram to use when you have, this is for part B. So we have eight radians. So the important thing here, check in which quadrant does eight radians lie? Which quadrant? Where is the angle eight radians or maybe seven radians or 10 radians or five radians? Just remember this nice diagram. I call it nice diagram. From zero here, angle zero to, we call this 90 degrees, but in radians, this is pi over two, which is 1.57. Or you have to remember these special numbers. Pi, we know 3.14. See, just imagine where is eight radians. Now, if you continue, this would be 4.71. If you complete the cycle, we know this is two pi. See, two pi, 6.28, that's easy, but still less than eight. Now you continue, see, this is a positive angle, more than two pi, eight radians, more than two pi, why? 2 pi only 6.28, then you have to continue. See, even if you add 6.28, you add 1.57. It will be 7.85. It will be also in quadrant two here. You see now? See, eight radians will be complete, complete cycle like this. And then it will go again in quadrant two. So eight radians is greater than two pi. So we subtract two pi, eight minus 6.28. If you want to know that another way, 1.72. 1.72, see, is greater than 1.57, which is one fourth here of the circle. So this angle eight radians lies in quadrant two to find the coterminal you have to subtract eight minus two pi. So that's the angle now, eight minus two pi. You can leave it. See eight radians and uh, the coterminal now eight minus two pi. They both lie in quadrant two. Let's find the reference now. See the formula here. If the angle lies in quadrant two, so it's pi minus the theta in quadrant two. So this is quadrant two. So the reference theta dash or theta prime will be pi minus the angle. See, this is the angle or its coterminal. So pi minus in the bracket, eight minus two pi. When you simplify it, you get minus eight here and minus minus two pi, three pi minus eight. That is the reference of eight radians. Now let's find the exact value of this sine minus 510, cosine of 300, and this one. So we can find each one separate. If the angle is negative, as I mentioned before, or very large angle, you have to find coterminal. If not, directly you go to reference. So minus 510, this is a negative angle. So let's add 720, which is two times 360. It becomes 210. Now 210 is between zero and 360. It lies in quadrant three. So let's find the reference. In quadrant three, we take the angle 210 minus 180, which is 30 degrees. Now leave it. Let's go to 300. 300 is less than 360. No need for coterminal. So it lies in quadrant four. Directly we go to the reference. 360 minus 300 will be 60. Now minus 210. You have to find the coterminal. So you add 360, you get 150. 150 lies in quadrant two. To find the reference, 180 minus 150, which is 30 degrees. Now let's put everything together. See this one, sine minus 510. This is in quadrant, this is the same as sine 210, quadrant three. Cosine 300, quadrant four. Square root of three, leave it here. Cosine minus 210, 150. This is in quadrant two. Now remember, sine 210 in quadrant three, it's minus. So minus and then sine of the reference. Cosine 300 is plus in quadrant four, the cosine is plus. So we put cosine the reference. Square root of three, we leave it. 
cotan 150 in quadrant two. The cotan is minus, so I put a minus here, cotan the reference. So you have to be careful about the pluses and the minuses. It depends on the angle and the quadrant. So I put here the uh, values if you want to use them. Sine 30, we know half, there is a minus. Cosine 60 is also half. Square root of three from the question given. Cotan 30 is square root of three and there is a minus. Multiply everything you get minus 13 over four. Now, which one of the following statements is true? This is a multiple choice question, MCQ, A, B, C, D, E. That means we have a one true and four false. Let's see, this is so easy to check. Cotan minus 100 degrees less than zero. Minus 100 degrees lies in quadrant three. So the cotan is positive. See like that, you can check easily. Now minus 800 lies in quadrant four. See the minus clockwise lies in quadrant four. So the secant of this angle is positive. Yes, secant will be one over the cosine. So this statement is correct, number C. Alpha is the reference angle of 675 and beta is the least positive coterminal of minus 240. Let's find alpha plus beta in radians. So let's take one by one. 675 is greater than 360 for sure. So we subtract 360, we get 315. So let's find the reference. 315 lies in quadrant four. The reference would be 360 minus 315, which is 45 degrees in radians pi over four. Leave it now. So this is alpha. See alpha here, pi over four. Now the coterminal of minus 240, let's add multiples of two pi. If you add 360, you get 120. Okay, that's the coterminal positive, 120. Multiply by pi over 180, you get two pi over three. That's the coterminal positive. So you add pi over four and two pi over three, the LCD will be 12. So to be 11 pi over 12 radians. If you need alpha plus beta, just extra here, alpha plus beta in degrees, you add 45 degrees plus 120 will be 165 which is the same as 11 over 11 pi over 12 radians. Question number seven, we need to express secant alpha in terms of sine alpha where alpha lies in quadrant three. So I start by saying, see, I know secant alpha will be one over cosine of alpha, that's the reciprocal. All right, but I need secant alpha in terms of the sine. So I can use sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha is one. I find cosine squared one minus sine squared of alpha, cosine of alpha plus or minus this. Alpha lies in quadrant three, then the secant is negative. See? And also the cosine is negative and the sine is negative. So I take here the cosine is negative, see the cosine here is negative, and then I put it there, but I can put the minus up or down. So the secant alpha that I need, minus one over square root of one minus sine squared of alpha. That's secant in terms of sine alpha. Now, these are the answers of the seven questions we just did. For other examples and the rules, you can please visit the video on lecture 13 pre-calculus course. It's called Trigonometric Functions of Angles. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you very much for listening.